Welcome one, welcome all. Welcome back to Panama City as we're getting ready for now the time where the rubber really starts meeting the road as now we start trying to define who goes to India and of course who goes to the final this coming Sunday, May 7th. And for those of you watching all over the world, you've enjoyed your Labor Day. And also had a great chance to be with family, be with friends, and enjoy the day off. And to see Group D, that is Honduras, the United States, and Cuba. Of course, Honduras coming in second place in Group A. Cuba also coming in in second place in Group B, the United States, the winner of Group C, as they'll watch from the sidelines, or at least from afar, to see what happens here and wait to see where they fall in. And knowing that one of these two teams, maybe even both, based on how the results come out, could be in a very dire situation. Remember, these two teams have faced off already. Two teams that faced off back in the 2015 edition tournament that was held in Honduras, and it was a 1-1 draw there in the early stages of that tournament. Honduras, of course, went to the final where they finally lost to Mexico. So overall, it will be a very competitive match. Cuba, of course, battling through and being able to get a second place in a very difficult group B. But for the most part, they were able to execute their plan very well, and they've had one of the most intense performances and looking to get back after a 26-year drought. Of course, these two teams very familiar with one another as they ended up being part of each other's pre-tournament preparation. These two teams faced off in Honduras. We'll talk a little bit more about that when the time comes, but for the most part, Two teams that have been very familiar with each other and looking to at least use that. Damas y caballeros, por favor, demos la bienvenida a las selecciones nacionales de Cuba y Honduras para este partido de campeonato sub-17. Favor permanecer de pie para escuchar el Hilo Nacional de Cuba, seguido por el Hilo Nacional de Honduras.
So moments away from kickoff here at the Estadio Maracana in Panama City. A very gray afternoon here in uh, the Panamanian capital and clouds lurking and let's we'll find out if they'll stay away as both of these teams facing off course the nightcap will be Costa Rica Panama as fans looking to avoid the rush or at least enjoy a match beforehand and seeing what they can do is Cuba pretty much with their A lineup as Echeverria and goal Rendon Espino Cole and Pinedo with Rodriguez Ibarra and Perez in the middle, Savigny, Rosette, and up top, Yandri Romero. Got a big starting line for Rufino Sotolongo. As Cuba look to get back to the World Cup for the first time since 1991. As you see Jose Kelis, one of two referees, actually one of three referees, the other one is Ismael Cornejo, two of them that happen to be in the CONCACAF qualifiers back in 2015, making their return. And Kelis, the Panamanian referee, of course. He's accompanied by the second referee, his compatriot, Alejandro Camarena. Well, well, that was another name that he, was, he mentioned it. It was the PA announcer getting his name mixed up, Alejandro Camarena of Panama, alongside Richard Dimash of Canada and Ismael Cornejo of El Salvador. As you see, the starting lineup is it's Vanegas and Gol Gomez, Barr, Moreira, and Odri Perez. Madrid, Chavez, Aguay with Palma, and Lopez playing in the middle, and Patrick Palacios and the leading goal scorer in this tournament. Carlos Mejia up top for Jose Valladares. Lots of fans to Panama for this tournament. We've seen, of course, lots of fans from Mexico and the United States, but also Costa Rica's had a good representation, Honduras as well. And it'll be interesting to see how that holds up for the remainder of this tournament. It's been a very interesting one to watch as both teams are about to begin action. As we're waiting here for the yeah. coordinator to give the indication and deep again looking in we're underway as it's Cuba and their traditional red kit Honduras in their respective traditional kit going from right to left it'll be interesting to see a couple of matchups as they break down we'll start to see Palma as you see him in the middle Mejia giving an effort as it goes to Carrera Espino. Looking for Mejia, that's where the ball will go. Mejia being bottled away from the ball. Nothing will be called as Miguel Cole instantly pulled up slightly and he was able to get the ball away. And you start to see again how important Mejia is out wide. Palma will play a little bit further up and Osbe Perez getting caught a little bit higher up. He'll be playing in a more variable position over on the right side. Axel Gomez on the left is a big bit as the young man from Latense will be an option to start looking down the right hand side. He now on the left, you see Axel Gomez sending it deep to Mejia, and he just watches that ball go by and kind of wonders. He'll get a lot of the work as Cuba in the middle will start to look and find and see Gianmarco Rodriguez, and it's Carlos Banegas. Cuba, one of the toughest teams in this tournament to be able to score on. They lost their last match 3-1 against Costa Rica. But overall, we've seen a, a team in Cuba that have had some really talented young players begin to develop. Here's Mejia, cuts inside, but cuts right into the middle. And looking deep for Savinia, goes over the head. Here's Savinia down the middle, looking, trying to find Jandri Romero, who's being marked tightly. Cross. Uh, Romero pulled up easily. Retrieved there by Carlos Vanegas, the young goalkeeper from Pomayagua Football Club. And that's where Savigny and company will be very dangerous. The trio 
So far has caused a lot of problems from many defenses so far in this tournament. And they truly have shown some good promising circumstances and situations where they place themselves. The finishing at times might lack a little bit as far as the proficiency, but when they've had the chances and they've been able to come up huge, overall it's been a team that has been very dangerous. Each one of those players up top with Juan also Manuel Cruz with a goal and included in that particular list is, of course, the right back, Bruno Rendon, scoring the draw against Curacao to open things up. Mejia. Deep ball looking for Patrick Palacios. Honduras on the attack and caught from behind, no foul. A little bit more lenient, Jose Kelly, so let them play. That's Alexander Barr. to start looking at is how Honduras start to open things a little bit wider. Initially in these first few minutes what we've seen is that they're way too close or at least pinching in a little bit too much and keeping the central defenders in play. They really haven't been forced to shift wide too much. And that could be a very key situation for Honduras to be able to break if they're capable of at least opening things out just a little bit more as the ball will go out of bounds back to the bonus. Move on the reset here. As it's Rodriguez. Omar Perez angry in the middle of the pitch, but he's being marked in the middle by Palma. A wide goes to Rosetti. Be a bit of history being made. And ball crossed into the middle, goes right over the head of Jambri Perez, mistimed his jump ever so slightly. And it's Mejia dropping back on the recovery. Bruno Rindon. Mejia gets the attraction. Here we go is, again, it'll be Cristian Moreira with the service looking for Mejia. And again, start looking and not being able to connect. That ball ends up going out wide to Yandri. And he's able to get it, but it deflects off of a defender and it goes straight to goalkeeper Carlos Banega. So far, very intense match in the middle of the pitch. Cuba starting to stack the middle, preventing any swift transit of the ball, but allowing some transitions. Rodriguez goes past three defenders. Chance to shot, it goes wide. Started swerving on route to goal. Banega's just at least making it an effort to make sure that ball does not go out of bounds. Perhaps he doesn't go in the back of the net, I should say. As it's Mejia on the reset, quickly moving it forward, Honduras, but quickly closing down is Cuba. As it's Carlos Ibarra. This match, and Rufino Sotolongo mentioned it in yesterday's practice, was talking about how vital this match is, even started categorizing it as one of the biggest in the well, past 26 years for Cuban football to be able to get back to that World Cup that they've so anxiously been wanting to return to. So for him, a good start, and we've seen the intensity that the Cubans have put in as of right now. That's one thing that has been quite the issue, and it's been talked about and has been preached upon in practice as it's Mejia. 
Standing tall is Carel Espino. Back into the middle for Palma. Rushing through Patrick Palacio offside. He's just trailing to make sure that ball is not going in his path. And it'll be a corner kick. First of the match coming up for Los Catrachos. So early on, we've seen Cuba really start to press the middle. Andres looking to go wide, but as soon as that ball comes into the middle of the pitch, we've seen Cuba converge a lot better and force the transitions a little bit better and forcing Cuba to go through and Honduras looking for a better chances to still keep the ball in the area. It's cleared away. Barr bringing it back, now cleared away again by Omar Perez. Moreira, bit unorthodox there on the clearance, but not being able to do much on. Don't want to see because here on the near side, Rendon got caught a little bit off his line, but want to make sure about this. Looks initially, like he was a bit on, he was on side, but. The angle not really too convincing. <laughs> Axel Perez, because it's Moreira. He's shoving the ball forward on the left hand side. Cole just wants to sweep it wide and not much else going on. And it is a much a repetitious state of mind right now for Honduras. But again, that's the only option that they've been able to find to move the ball forward in a clean fashion. It's Alexander Barr. Again, Honduras. Look how many players for Cuba end up converging. This time the ball going in the middle for Everson Lopez and didn't have many chances and didn't have many options to really push it forward. Is Cuba now with Cole. Close to, again, Patrick Palacios. Mejia, but gets converged on. Good makeup there by the Cuban central defender. Skoll was able to backtrack and be able to find the ball to go wide, and Honduras will get it again on the reset as we get already into the 10th minute of play. No score, but not for lack of opportunities. It's again Mejia. Here's Mejia setting up with the left foot! And Carlos Mejia with his fifth of the tournament. 1-0. Honduras at 11. Good movement there by Carlos Mejia. As you can see him right here. Look at how the defense just stays. And when Espino gets caught in the middle, give and go. As a wonderful play. And now you start to see that Carlos Mejia, how he's able to move around as in the 11th minute, that give and go, opening spaces, quick ball movement, is able to trump numbers in certain sectors. That's the big difference, and that's what Honduras was capable of doing when things got very tight and when you needed to change the dynamic a little bit more of the match. They did that, and they went to their go-to guy, Carlos Mejia, fifth goal of the tournament, as Honduras up 1-0. Palma again with the pressure as he goes up and when he goes up you start to see Everson Lopez stay although you do have much more of a tendency to see things like those happening here is again oh that bit is a chance that goes just wide and now Honduras using the wings and the matchup that are favoring them right now as they find better positioning and a better advantage to run the ball better attack angles that they're looking for and being able to find that make the difference in this first half in the early stages again a foul being called on Madrid so he said let's, let's take a second hold on Cuba now as expected will have their lines forced to push up forward to be able to maintain some formation 
spacing, and that's where the difference starts to occur. As you start to see Omar Perez go out wide, that's where the ball goes. Rosetti opening himself up, but it goes right to Banegas. Instead of trying to evolve, trying to have play created, they, or in this case, they, starting with Omar Perez, trying to rush the ball forward a bit too much. The ball is recovered in the middle. Here's again, Andres with Jefferson. Chavez, again with Perez. Escalera Espino, here's Mejia, going up against Rendon, give and go as it goes to Patrick Palacios, he swings it out wide, it goes again as Perez not being able to control it, but give and go again opens things up for Honduras as it goes outside to Perez, Perez going back into the middle. Missed on the precision there, as he did have Mejia wide open on the opposite side of the goal, and not much really going in as far as the execution on that second to last touch. Echeverria. Again, Honduras figure it out. Okay, they're, they're gonna press. We move it quick. Giving go that wall passing really makes a huge difference. And that's why some coaches want to establish quick ball movement. Because if you press in numbers and you're able to move the ball quickly out of those areas, you're going to find in a sector of the pitch that is going to be either under or overcompensated as you start to see how play ends up developing, man. Out wide as it's Mejia who gets pushed from behind. And despite the protest from Carlos Ibarra, it'll still be Honduras' ball as he just wasn't able to put on his brakes quick enough. You can see right here. There ends up bumping him from behind, and Honduras will get the ball back. And it's going to be Palma. He really took a shot from outside. He's come close a couple of times. Scored actually on one of them. There he goes right to Echeverria. Echeverria has been probably one of, if not the best goalkeeper in this tournament. Moreira. So it goes back to Axel Gomez. Ball again for his good Perez, who's been more in an attacker. Perez coming through, has Palacios! 2 0 for Honduras at 16. Patrick Palacios! And the difference just absolutely overwhelming down the wings. When Honduras opened things up, that's when things started to occur for them, getting away from the central defenders. Deep ball as it's Obed Perez being able to beat his mark. Not much that could be done there. Patrick Palacios at 16 makes it 2 0 for Los Catrachos. You see right there the reaction from Jose Valladares. That's what happened. At first, Patrick Palacios just waiting for the run to be made. He waits for Perez. As soon as that run's made on the outside, he starts sprinting through. Is now Palma getting involved in the attack. Mejia gets around as you start to see the wide play being the major difference. Mejia, Mejia, Mejia with another chance. Mejia! The ball gets cleared out and it's goal. Palma as he gets tripped up there by Carrero Espino. And a yellow card is going to be issued at the 17th minute. It'll go to Karen Espino. As you see, the wide play has truly emerged in these past few minutes. And it forces Cuba to have to become more physical in certain spaces where physicality well, ends up translating into a booking. Almost becomes a third goal just instances before that going to Chivarria has to punch it out it goes to Madrid out wide it goes again 
as Honduras attacking Chavez. Echeverria. Look at how silky smooth Echeverria comes out when he has to get those crosses. A lot of that credit has to be given to his goalkeeping coach, Paula Lomar, who's been one of the stalwarts for Cuban football over the past two decades. And goalkeeping coach at every single level. And now Cuba looking to settle things down, but too far there for John Rodriguez. Lopez. Marcel Gomez. Just all types of problems. Back the wing, big base, giving headaches over on the far side. Need it, need it, be needed. Need Over set, the ball comes through on side. Trying to take two. Ball comes through. Here's a good chance. Advantage being given by the referee. Trying to set it through. Here's a chance for Palma. And it goes just over, but again, Honduras, when they're finding the balls quickly, yeah, they go in. And you start to see how things have changed since the ninth, maybe 10th minute. At first, we saw Honduras looking to bring the ball towards the middle and trying to drive it through. It's an infraction being called on Pedro Pinedo. And he too will get it talking to. Okay, settle it down. So, with that, right there, the collision between him and Osbe Perez. But Honduras has just been all over the place. Here's Jefferson Chavez. Does have Pettis to drop back to. to. Push it right through, but not much going on. Is Another thing, too, where you have players like Mejia, when you have players like Osbid Pettis, you're not getting a lot of support from Cuba in the midfield. There's a chance to shot by Palma that goes wide. You don't see a lot of support from the outside players, either pressing or at least getting in front, putting a body on Mejia and preventing him from being able to open up so much. You don't see a lot of mark in the middle. That, that's why you, you have your defensive and you have your backs in a situation where they have to wait and it's converge upon forwards. That's when things get complicated. Here's Savigny. Savigny. Looking at least continue that play. But it goes into the hands of Venegas. Venegas again. He had a lot of instances of just one shot early on that went just wide. But after that, Honduras seemed to settle down. They, they started to find that the way to goal is down the wings. Palma, as Mejia opens himself up. See where, again, Rodriguez dropping back. Mejia getting the ball comfortably. Now here's Axel Gomez going out wide to the far side. Offside, though, was... Was bit bit is the better option would have been to go to Axel Gomez, and with all that being created, you start to see how much of a problem the midfield is having trying to at least neutralize the attack, and that's where the genesis of a lot of these counters and a lot of these quick transitions have developed for Honduras. You start noticing when Cuba do go on the attack, you see Jim. Marco Rodriguez getting the ball, but he stays in that position. He loses the ball, doesn't drop back in mark. And again, that puts a lot of strain on the back line as they're the ones that have to try and fend everything off. Again, Osbe Perez being shielded there by Cole. The midfield pinching in quite a bit. 
And as soon as it goes wide, they, there's really no one to drop back. There's really no support being given as the midfield at times seems a little bit linear when they're attacking. And when they drop back, there's really no one to be able to relay and offer numbers or bring in a second defender to be able to fend off an impending attack. Chavez, if he yeah, gets the Axel Gomez, and you see quick ball movement, forcing the outside back to have to come out. There he's able to fend that the defender well, and ends up being a throw in for Honduras as we reach the 23rd minute of play, and Honduras with a 2 0 lead. There's two goals in the span of five minutes. It's Axel Gomez. He's gonna serve it and move it. And Coming back into the middle for Everson Lopez. Here's Mejia again serving it through. Oh, what Palma just missed. Oh, another chance that Palma puts over the bar. Unbelievable. Mejia is just parting. Might as well just call him Moses right now because he's part of that defense. Because that is some a well aware positioning and running and anticipation by Carlos Mejia, but the defense watching a great deal of the time. Here's Perez, marching through, dropping back. Here's a chance at 3-0 for Los Catrachos. And finally, he gets his Osbed Perez at 24. Honduras 3, Cuba 0. He gets the ball, just powers it through. There's really not much else. He's just working. And the central defender, I'm not sure if it was Espino just watching. Cole doesn't come back. And that's the major issue. And on that play, Cole just watches as Carlos Espino based on the desperation that he had, has to come in at the last minute. But that, by that point, things, well, started to go from worse to, well, much worse. 3-0, and Bid Pitt is getting his second goal of the tournament. And Honduras, with this result, This result, Honduras already setting themselves in a very good position to clinch a spot in the 2017 Under-17 World Cup. Obviously, it's not official until the next match between them and the United States as it'll be a free kick coming up for Cuba. But they put themselves in a very, a la very linea. favorable position. A la linea. Jose Valladares a la linea. was very intent on trying to jump on Cuba quickly. Hasta que la Hasta que la Remember, these two teams Hasta que la they stopped twice before the tournament started. Vanegas just makes sure that ball goes wide. Just wide. Just a few inches. Back in March, Cuba began their Central American tour as they made stops in Honduras, El Salvador, and also here in Panama. Their first match was a 2-1 win against this same Honduran side. Patrick Palacios scored in the first half, but it was Ronaldo Rossetti and Rivaldo Roldan, the two that scored for Cuba in the 2-1 win. A few days later, they played a second match, and Honduras won that 4-2. That was the stop that they had in their Honduras portion of the Central American tour. As it goes to Banegas, knocked away. Barr sees it go over. Here's a good chance as Cuba still battling for it, and there'll be a foul in favor of Los Catrachos. And then after the two matches in El Salvador, 
Cuba came back to finalize things here and take the last few weeks to prepare and face Panama on two occasions. And then six matches to prepare for this tournament. Quickly moving forward are Honduras, Axel Gomez. Gomez again dropping it back for Everson Lopez. Palma keeping it wide and look how much differences are seen as play goes out wide. Just camped out on the right side with those bit Pérez. And those bit Pérez pretty much playing it as a right back playing as a number, playing at the number four spot. And you start to see where the differences are being made here. Wide play. They saw that the central defenders have to be put under duress and the best way to do it is to try and attack down the wings. Far. He'll get to see his teammates on Wednesday in the United States. Mejia. Here to keep that ball alive. Here's Mejia again winning it. Looking for number four is Honduras. As it goes to Patrick Palacio. Waiting. Sending it. Oh, could have waited a little bit more because he didn't have Palma out wide. Actually, more towards the middle, I should say. To his right. But Cuba will get it back. As Cuba, right now, is rattled. Finding a way to look to go forward. Somehow, Alexander Lopez getting a touch on it. Savigne, with a good ball, has to wait. Palacios had to wait. Have to go first time. As soon as he made that second touch, he, his teammate was already offside. Goes to Mejia. Shielded away there by Rendon. And Cuba just not being able to find because you have the outside backs in isolation in the give and go. You have someone coming down the wing full speed ahead. You have to wait and see what happens. And you can't drop back too much. You have to try and stay as synced as possible. Then you're not getting too much help from your central defender either converging. So put yourself in a very risky proposition if you're an outside back for Cuba right now as the overlap coming through. And this is how Cuba has been just dominated in this first half. Looking to send that ball through. It goes to Palma. Palma to Mejia. Mejia looking to get an assist to provide into the middle. And it's again Cuba 4-0. The ball that comes in. And it's Patrick Palacios. Thirty-one minutes, and it's four nil. And coming through, mistake there by Chevarria playing that ball. And unfortunately, that ball slips through. Palacios. The assist going to Mejia. Palacios with a brace. I almost didn't go in for a second because Palacios had to collect it once. It gets deflected and finally just not a lot of aesthetic, but a lot of efficiency. Patrick Palacios with a high percentage shot, making it 4 0 for Honduras. And this result virtually just clinching a spot for Honduras now. Pinedo. Nicely coming off his kind of coming off his area, coming out of his area was Vanegas. Luis Rosetti is able to come through. The ball for Savigny. Andy Romero. Shot from outside. Romero again getting the rebound. And it goes just over. 
particular sequence. Thirty-third minute of play. And this format just makes things so unforgiving. Good pass here by Omar Perez, Savinho. As Cuba looking to get one back and trying to build back slowly. Triangulation too far there for Axel Gomez. But the idea to break out really, you don't see the numbers, but how Cuba coming presses just two players. So as soon as another Honduran player joins in, regardless, and I'll make an amendment there. Regardless if you have three or five, there's been instances where Cuba have been able to converge at least four or five players in certain sectors. When Honduras get that third player in, it opens a lot of opportunities for them, and we've seen it quite evident then in the four goals. Here's Palma looking for Mejia. Decides to take his time. Doesn't have numbers in his favor, so might as well just drop it back into the middle for Ederson Lopez. Axel Gomez. The one being made out wide. Osbid Perez was making a run down the far side. It goes to Mejia. He's able to be cold. He's able to body cold. He's able to put that shot on target and misses hitting the outside netting. But Osbid Perez all alone down the right hand side. The defense just completely not looking as you see a, a defense, especially Pinedo on the far side, just not being able to recognize that. Rosette making a run down the far side as it's Gandhi Romero finally poked away, cleared away, knocked away, tossed away by Gandhi Romero. That's the Cuban number nine. Rosette and Arbia corner kick coming up for Cuba as we get into the final 10 minutes of the first half. And it's been a demolition derby. Arriba! Los Catrachos. Took a few minutes, but as soon as they got the gears clicking, it was hard to get to stop them. As they want to be able to score as many as possible, establish a well cushioned goal differential. As Vanegas comes out, punches it straight back, looking to set it through. It's cool. Out wide is Cuba breaking out, but Honduras breaking out down the wings. Here's Palma. Mejia all alone down the far side. Recognize it as Mejia is going to collect it. Has one man to beat. Here's Mejia. 5 0. The cardinal sin of cardinal sins on set pieces is to allow so much space on the counter. Mejia, all he had to do was make one move. 5 0 for Honduras at 36. Right there, that's all he had to do. That's his sixth of the tournament. But good job by Palma too to recognize and and just survey all the all the pitch, make sure that there was no one open to just keep the, the ball, just to have him keep the ball in possession. And then as soon as he saw Mejia, what better option could you have? As Mejia getting talked to by the referees. So 5-0 at 36. Now 37th minute. As Cuba not only was that, but give a lot of credit to Banegas because it was Banegas being able to find the open man and now again Honduras going on the attack. Mejia all alone down the middle. Mejia running. Here's Palma. Look to set it through. Mejia is not going to get to that pass. Because it came out from Banegas, saw Palma. Palma didn't run full speed ahead but had a lot of room to be able to roam. He saw Mejia on the opposite side. Very well taken pass. And, well, we saw what happened with the end product. 5-0. 
Los Catrachos just dominating in this first half. That's Perez. Moreira. Look how, how clean Cuba come out. Again, the ball is sending it into space, seeing what happens. Chavez. Jose Perez. Oh, the pass was there for Palma first time, but couldn't get it to Jose Perez. He was off to the races. He was able to get that ball. Foul being called, and it'll be Madrid getting an infraction. Palma couldn't get it to Jose Perez, and it would have been just a long chase for Cole and Karel Espino and it's been a very long afternoon already for the two central defenders. Why he was onside. This is the target and oh yeah, that is just furious on how that play was defended. See right there. I thought he was offside but he was not. Rosete and also Rodriguez coming back. Some problems for Cuba, especially dropping back. We've seen Jamarco Rodriguez going up but not coming back. Rosete not being able to come back out of hits the back of Mejia. Running through with Rendon. Foul in favor of Cuba. See right there the infraction. see what happened in the last few minutes of this first Palma, half. Palma. Ojo, ojo, aquí, ojo. Honduras have been just absolutely dominating ojo, this first half. Ojo, Mejia. Ojo, Mejia, que la banda. And you'd have to start looking at some numbers to be able to see how Honduras have been able to react in first half. The chance of shot that slips just wide. As Vanegas just keeping it, just making sure. Right there. Stop for a second, but that ball was going to go in. It looked like he got a piece of it. But that was a bit indefinite. A bit Perez. Oh, and now you see Pinedo pressing. You have three on one, and especially in the middle, uh, what's noticeable there on that play. Pedro Pinedo comes out, has to defend three players. Because Ronaldo Rosetti was waiting for that ball to come in his direction. Here's Omar Perez. Axel Gomez. Mejia won't get to it. Sotolongo. Hey, 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 starts warming up, so there will be substitutions either at the beginning of the second half or minutes thereafter. Splitting through, Mejia, 6-0. Mejia with a hat trick. Mejia with a hat trick at 42. 
six nil for Honduras. At this point, you see a team that's been not on. The anticipation by Mejia as everybody watches. The two central defenders just watch. Echeverria, unfortunately, can't do much there as he's just right there. And you see Echeverria saying, come on, guys, let's go. As Mejia, every goal that gets tacked on puts Honduras closer to India. So at this point, you can start He's collecting the tickets, or punching it. You have to wait a few more days. At this point, a draw against the United States will put them through. They'll play on Wednesday. Again, Axel Gomez. He wants to get involved. Rindon. Waiting for Omar Perez. As Jan Rodriguez watches down the line as it goes deep for his big Perez. That's the seventh goal of the tournament for Carlos Mejia. That's the seventh goal. The last leading goal scorer in the 2015 edition was Ronaldo Cordoba, and he had six during Math in Panama. Antonio Granados back in 2013 had four. You have to start going back a significant amount of time, but ever since the format changed, Mejia has been able to put his name. As the ball comes through, the header, not enough power, the bounce back, the chance. Here's Palacios, wants to drop it back, couldn't. Echevarria gives the rebound. Now Honduras looking for number seven. Another ball, and another chance, and another opportunity for Honduras. To steal, of course, an American football team to kick the extra point. As Mejia looking for another one. One minute of stoppage time will be added. And free kick in a very sweet spot for Palma. It's going to be Palma. Doesn't need a lot of power, just needs to. So you said there's actually Mejia now. Wants to get another one. To me, it should be Palma, who's a much better free kick taker. At least he's shown. And it should have been Palma from the get go, as that'll be the last bit of action. At least Honduras will have one more chance. It's Axel Gomez, Mejia. We'll get it, and that'll be the end of the first half. And it was first half where Honduras did everything right, and Cuba did pretty much everything. Well, six nil. Honduras at the half.
only say it, the statistics tell the truth. That's all I can say. Six mil at the half. Start looking at a finely tuned Formula One and start trying to put bicycle wheels on it. Well, that's a recipe for disaster. And Cuba, from a defensive standpoint, has been a bit of a finely tuned machine. They've been a very tough team to defeat. They've been a very well executed, well worked team. But when they started reinventing, when they started to be able to put that ball or put themselves in the middle, and Honduras found such an easy, simple way to be able to change things around. Okay, well, we can't go through the middle, we'll go out wide. And it was sometimes maybe the longest, but it was also the fastest way to go because Honduras have some speedsters that have been able to burn the outside backs. But it's not just that. Let's, let's simplify it, how Johan Cruyff used to say, simple football. It's easy to look at and it's you know, a very simple game. But sometimes it's not simple to play in a simple manner. And Johan Cruyff is right because Honduras simplified things and saw much more clarity on their attack. Cuba, on the other hand, wanted to complicate things and they were completely blindsided by an incessant attack by the Hondurans. Long distance passes, well worked balls, lots of patience, good vision, a lot of work collectively, and just work. Honduras outworked Cuba. They were able to get to the ball first. They weren't looking. They were hungrier for every single ball that was going through. And you could have the best goalkeeper in the tournament, but the best goalkeeper can only do so much when you have defenders that aren't marking, when you have defenders that aren't going after it, that are staying linear, that aren't going after each and every ball and pressuring players that are coming to and fro. It's very difficult to be a goalkeeper when the outside of your defense becomes a freeway, an expressway, an autobahn for Honduras to go back and forth at will and did pretty much whatever they wanted. Yes, there were moments where there was a little bit of fight, but it wasn't enough for Cuba because they were committing a lot of basic sins, like giving Mejia a chance here after a corner kick that Banegas sends to Palma. Palma, cross country, sends it to Mejia. He gets his hat trick. And there's not much else to add. When you have a team that's out executing, out working, out running, out moving, it's very hard to say anything else. Here, of course, the out working, the out anticipating part is embodied on that play. The nod on, Mejia's right there, 6 0. Again, it's a simple game. And you really can't add too much after that. As Honduras have been getting to every single ball, have been moving around quicker, and have been dominating the entire first half.
second half about to begin here at the Maracana. And for those of you just tuning in, a hat trick by Carlos Mejia. Seven goals this tournament. Also add to that a brace by Patrick Palacios and Osbet Perez. Also contributing their sandwich in between all those goals. 6-0 for Los Catrachos as the goal differential becomes a major ally for Honduras as they feel at least a step, maybe a step and a half closer to getting to India. Of course, there's still a bit ways to go in this group to be able to define that particular step, but still lunging towards India ever so closely have been young men uh, that are led by Jose Valladares. Last time these <laughs> Honduras scored six goals on any opponent back on April 23rd of 2009, a 6-0 victory against you guessed it, Cuba. Waiting for an indication is Alberto Moque. No changes for either side. And remember, in this type of format, unforgiving and all, goal difference is a major factor. Does it when you start getting to the under 17 level, do you start looking at the possibility of, I guess how many would call it, running up the score? That's something that many will have to look at as Mejia wide open on the left-hand side. Cuba looking to settle things down. At times they look like they were going to, but from a formation standpoint, many look like they were in the labyrinth. Big Perez. Madrid has essentially played as a right back. Perez going out as the wing. So a bit of a change there for Valladares as the ball won by Chavez. Lopez. Chavez again looking to send it deep. Palacios looked like he was offside. It goes over to Mejia nonetheless. And now Mejia on the attack looking to continue and tackling on one more goal. More. We'll see how things work out. The cross, it goes over and out of bounds. Quick reset here. Vanegas, Madrid, Bar, Moreira, Perez. We'll start looking at how the formation looks. Madrid with Bar and Moreira. And then Axel Gomez. How wide is Mejia as the ball gets past him? And there's one have a, as much of a margin as possible. We know that this is the match where they have to make the difference. In the middle, it's Palma and Everson Lopez alongside Jefferson Chavez. Perez, of course, playing up top. Palacios and Mejia. The 11 for Jose Valladares. Echeverria. Redon Espino, Paul Piñeiro. Rodriguez, Ibarra, and Perez sliding in. Or Ronaldo Rossetti, who's playing on the left-hand side with Romero in the middle and Brian Savigny out wide on the right. That's Jose Kelis giving instructions. Saying no. You shouldn't have come in that way. Both of these teams have faced off 
It's the third time as Mejia all alone. Rendon watches that ball go out wide, and John Marco Rodriguez just watches from the middle of the pitch. As he had two players going down the left wing. Chavez. Still through, and Rendon. Looking for Salinha, but gonna go just wide. Chased by Moreira. He shepherded out. Yeah, it's been interesting to see from a tactical Gracias. standpoint. Gracias. But at times, Cuba, the big difference that was being made was obviously Honduras getting to 50 50 balls much quicker, winning the second balls, in some cases, even winning the first balls, and the second and the third. But it was. Cuba not dropping back and putting their back line in such dire straits that it truly complicated how they had to defend. And we're back as the shot goes over. And your midfield's not giving you support. And you don't have the players that are slowing down an impending attack, then that really complicates things for you as a defender. Moreira begins to the 51st minute of play. 6 0 for Honduras. Cole. Cole is losing the ball. He goes out wide to Everson Lopez, swept through by Omar Perez. Final one of the Egyptian Chavez. Moreira bringing it down as he goes again to Lopez. Out wide is Axel Gomez. And then Marco Rodriguez winning. And being able to keep that ball in bounds. It's Chavez now. Ederson Lopez chasing, Cole. Cuba looking to get out of that sector, trying to avoid the pressure as it goes to Mejia. Brings it down, deadens the ball off his chest. It's again, Palacios wide open as Olga Perez only goes to Palma instead. And Honduras will get it. Coming up next will be Costa Rica. There with a kick, a swing play there if you're playing basketball. But again, it's Rossetti. Passes right there for Sandro Romero, looking for the foul, not going to get it. And now this is important to see how the balls is bouncing around. It'll be interesting to see. When Cuba have lost the ball in this sector, it's been one of the differences that they're able to go on the attack, send numbers on the attack, but when they have to go and defend, they don't drop back. A very simple football concept there. I mean, not mentioning anything that's revolutionary from that perspective. And one yellow card up to now as it goes to Mejia. As Axel Gomez out wide running into the middle of this Palma. And Mejia dashing through. Can be a corner kick for Honduras again. Luis Catrachos. 
shown some varying shot to here. And the header, the chance to save by Echeverria. Great header by Patrick Palacios as he was looking for his hat trick as well. Bar. Brushes that ball aside. Eduardo Roldan comes on for Cuba. 54. Eduardo Roldan. Coming on. Eduardo Romero comes on. So Savino will switch over to the middle. Romero will stay out wide on the right. And over on the left will be Rossetti. Rossetti is an interesting football history. His father, Bernardo Rossetti, was back on the team in 1988 that won the CONCACAF under 16 then. It was the last team to win the under 16 championships back in 1988. Was part of the team that played in the World Cup the following year as the yellow card being given to Madrid's. That's at 56. Rosetti, Pérez. Now, here's where Honduras have to be careful as the match can get a little testy. And the yellow card being given, was it to Moreira? It looks like it was. I was going to actually check that. That was number seven, Jefferson Chavez. It wasn't the clearance, it was the elbow that eventually came through, and that was at 57. So, the first yellow card for Honduras, the third of the match. And a free kick opportunity here, it's Cuba looking to get one back. And just a terrible night chasing down the young man from Oldin. So that's cool. Almost hitting the ball boy and, and, and get bouncing out of the stadium. Palma. Del Pérez. Echeverría. A 
Axel Gomez as play now kind of subsiding a little bit as we enter the 59th minute of play. And Honduras with a 6-0 lead. With Palma as he intercepts the ball. Couldn't regain his balance quickly, but Madrid. That is talking to Palma and saying, come on, man. I'm kind of simplifying it a little bit for you, the bridge version. Espino. Rosicki. Palma is Palacios offside. Big Pitt is trying to power it through. Players in the area. Palma wide on the right. The foul being called in. Cuba again looking for Jansen. Quite a long time. They have a player that has scored as many goals as Carlos Mejia has as a man down. It's a lot of pities. And wide open, just two players wide open. It was Palma as well as those big pities. And in the middle, Omar Perez still down. So, again, the, the opportunities that Honduras have been able to create with six shots that went in out of eight that were taken on goal. I'm just talking about the ones on target. I'm not talking about the ones that went over. I'm, not talking about those. I'm just talking about the ones that went on target. Total of eight in the first half. really extremely telling. It's Moreira. And a challenge there by Roldan. And the ball had just gone. And Roldan going into the referee's book. That's at 50, excuse me, 62. the turf. And again, the ball taken away is Perez. Palacios. That's the shed in the Mejia looking for the poker. Saved by Echeverria. So again, how easily Cuba lost that ball. Palacios as Palma waits a little too long for the ball and it's cleared away. Madrid swinging, missing, giving it right back into the middle. It's Savini. The bar is waiting right there. Yeah. 
contact there with Omar Perez, looking and trying to find some opportunities. down and you don't want that to be a chop to the throat WWE style. So right there, just the arm just flailed a little bit. No bad intention, but Again, Honduras getting very close now. To be able to get another team into a World Cup. He, of course, one of the major products that has emerged. Of course, many will be looking at him and his development. This will be one of those names that you'll start looking at, especially when, with this team that is showing such great potential for 2019 at the under 20s. So looking at that as well. And it'll be a very interesting competition in two years time when you have this Honduras side, when you have of course, the U.S. and what they've been able to have as far as players emerging. Mexico, as they always have been, as, as as it's emerging. Costa Rica also in the mix. So that under 20 tournament, it's uh, probably promoting it a little bit. Of course, two years away, but one of those things that you can start really looking forward to and seeing really young players like these take the next step in what could be a professional career. Well, why not being in, in the next step in their international careers if you start looking at it from a long-term perspective and seeing where that might lead them within the national team program. It's Cuba again. Honduras have taken the pedal, or the foot off the pedal, I should say. Cuba still battling in the middle. And the circuit will be gone. Excuse me, that's going to be Omar Perez. And he ends up going into the showers early. You see right here. Straight red. That's at 67. So it wasn't even another yellow card. It was straight red as a Marfere. And he goes to the showers early in Cuba. Right on the shin. Dropper, what just happened now he realizes what's just occurred and it's fine there but he has to go and be ushered off the pitch as you can see right here Ooh. straight red Chavez coming off. Let's see if he gets subbed off. Yeah, it's going to be number 10, Joshua Canales of Olympia coming on. Let's see if he comes off for Chavez, or he comes on for Chavez, I should say. So Cuba down a man. 
and down six goals. Mejia. As for City, Cuba now playing a 5 1 3. Palacios up coming back with an offside as Axel Gomez. Let's see if right now both teams playing with 10. Let's see what happens with Canales. He'll be coming on for Jepson Chavez. Substitution for Honduras at 70. Again, the ball comes through. Mejia goes out wide to Perez. You see it out now. Cuba clears it out. There's only one player waiting for it. Is going forward. It's Carlos Ibarra, who's pretty much playing as a central defender. Hey, it's Gianmarco Rodriguez. Hey, it's Gianmarco Rodriguez. Hey, it's Manuel Cruz, changing midfielders. It's Canales. So Cuba pushing forward. You see right there, just only three players up top for Cuba. Two in the midfield. So playing it. Four, two, three. Here's Mejia. Canales. That is it's Palma. Going for us, Big Perez. Handball coming up, and it'll be a free kick. And it's got to be Palma from that range. The ball coming through. And Cuba getting the foul. Here. Middles Palacios just waiting for the pass back as Espino intercepting. A nice breeze coming in from the water. And Cuba, as soon as they get the ball, they lose it, but then they're able to quickly counter. Roldan. Deep ball as it's Cuba on the attack with Cruz. Bar. Following through and nobody dropping back. There's four players there as Honduras add another gear. Three players still inside the area and now Honduras going with Mejia. Full speed ahead. They're going pa it's Patrick Palacios looking for number seven. Palacios, 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 seven nil for Honduras. He gets his hat trick. That's his third of the tournament. That's his third of the match. And again, you look, Cuba lost the ball. It took a little while for Honduras to get started. Right now, we see the most lopsided score of the tournament. It's Palacio with a hat trick. Mejia with the hat trick. 7-0. And there's still time for more. <laughs> so 
start looking at blowouts. Cuba just still with their 4-2-3. Start to see Palacios as he goes deep, looking for his poker. Palacios waiting for a drop into the middle. It goes to Lopez. Five players defending for Cuba. Six if you add a drop back in the middle by none other than Carlos Ibarra. Mejia. Maybe both are gonna want to get four goals apiece. We'll see. But Honduras, no, but it's gotta be all about goal differential. Any might favor this type of format, many might not, but this is one of the byproducts of it. As it goes through, cleared away by Carel Espino. Ibarra. Lopez. Palacios has Mejia wide open on the left hand side. Goal. Echevarria. Terry coming to epic proportions now. Last time we saw a result like this, actually it was the day before. Another rush. Close. Offside, okay. You're losing 7-0, and you decide to press in the middle of the pitch. That's all I have to say. Mejia, look how many players for Honduras in the middle of the pitch is the one being made by Osbet Perez. Got El Espino keeping everyone on side. As Honduras start knocking the ball around, switching it from one end to the other, the run being made by Madrid as he joins the attack. Madrid waiting for some accompaniment. Madrid taking it down the line. He's gonna cross into the middle, nobody there. Perez comes late, just a shade late, and gives it right back to Honduras. Chance from outside, that's not gonna happen. Ooh. Guess that what? Maybe a hundred points for knocking the seat off its moorings. Third and final substitution, Ronaldo Rosete comes off. And dropping or coming in is Carlos Molina. That's at 77. For that goal, I was mentioning the most lopsided result. Remember that the last time that Honduras scored six goals was back on April 23rd. Well, the most lopsided goal as of late was the day before. It was a 7-0 victory for Mexico against Trinidad and Tobago over at the Estadio Caliente. Honduras full speed ahead now. Palma, two players in the area now. It's Palacios dropping back as Mejia. Inside is Canales as it goes over to Everson Lopez. Wants to take a shot, another crack at it from outside. But that's not been the way to go as Honduras gets it back. Now Madrid joining. Madrid full speed ahead. Madrid against five. Madrid looking to push it in and it'll be a corner kick for Los Catrachos. minutes left. And 
Honduras looking for more. They want to get as many as they possibly can. That goal differential again, the difference. They're going to put it through. Look at their hand. No, but it was Honduran hand. That should be more Palacios. Like they got deflected off of him, but nothing much going on as it goes to Madrid. Canales out wide, the ball into the middle. Escarado Espino gets chase. Madrid. Rindon. Trying to dribble out of the back and comes out unscathed. Now Cuba trying to show something and loses the ball quickly. Here's Honduras on the transition. Out wide is Mejia. Mejia is going to try and dash right through, but doesn't find a way, so tries to find the, last, the path of least resistance. And you start to see again Honduras trying to handle proceedings. They're ending up this match in the final 10 minutes plus, trying to make another dent, another dash. It was Bet Perez waiting. And now it goes to Madrid. Mejia waiting as Cole now trying to keep him slightly onside. Mejia drops back as it goes out wide. Now adding on to the attack is Axel Gomez. Serving it through. Bet Perez off the bounce. Not playing it properly. So we start to see Honduras virtually punching their ticket to India. And despite all the criticisms that have come his way, of course, a lot of it in part because of what happened in World Cup qualifying play, a lot of it also due to Honduras not having qualified to the Copa America last year. A lot of it due because of the controversies that he's been able to generate from an extracurricular standpoint at times. And he's been looking for a lot, but he's also been able to create a lot for Luis Pinto as he's been the architect in a lot of these development programs for Honduras. And, and He's been trying to add a little bit more. As the under 20s were able to qualify to South Korea, getting to the final, or going down to the United States in penalty kicks, start to see the under 17s one step closer to repeating participating yet again in another World Cup as the ball is knotted away there by a chance to shot misdirected as Canal is trying to connect from outside. So from that perspective, a lot of what he has done has become part of it, part of what he has planned to do very involved at the youth levels. And Honduras trying to break out quickly. It's Cabrera winning that ball, keeping it alive, and now it transits down the left-hand side of the pitch. Cabrera waiting for it, and it's Mejia. Mejia back into the middle for Palacios, had some room once the first time in the middle for Mejia. Saw his teammate coming through as the Panamanian fans 
still coming in. Canales, Palacios offside. So coming up next after this match, it'll be Panama, Costa Rica, Costa Rica, Panama. Here at the Maracana is the foul being called on Madrid. He'll go into the referee's book at 85. Second yellow part of the match for Honduras. Sixth of the match, actually fifth of the match, because the yellow card was the second card that was given to Omar Pérez Mejia has that ball wrestled away from him that being made as it was Cabrera finally away by Pinedo, who's now playing as a central defender. Canel Espino playing as a defender. Now they're saying the yellow card was given to Arturo Godoy. Pretty difficult because he's Cuba's third goalkeeper. So the yellow card to Madrid, and of course, committed the infraction. Madrid waiting, timing his run. And another substitution coming on. It looks like it's going to be David Carmo. It's going to be Byron Varela. He was on side by about three yards, ladies and gentlemen. That was Alejandro Camarena trying to knock it through, and Cuba getting one back. As the fans cheering at 87. Substitution. This is Brian Savini. And you hear Jose Valladares is going nuts. Savini at 87 makes it 7 1. 87. Yeah. 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 So Wednesday will be Honduras in the United States facing off. gets caught offside. <laughs> and 
and of course they're giving credit that that was the stage. You're saying it's Carlos Molina on the goal, but Carlos Molina is not on the pitch, it's Brian Savinia. Final minute, we'll see how much time will be added by referee Jose Kelis. And coming through, Savini has shown some good moments in this tournament. As Honduras will go into first place. points, not only three points, but a plus six. A seven one victory. Even goes deep. We'll see how much time. It's more of a formality. Well, it's been a formality for a while. As Mali. Two minutes. Down two minutes of stoppage time. So, 11th minute, it was Mejia getting his first of three. Palacios in the middle. And the game just got very sloppy offensively. is looking for number eight. Dashing through the middle, has three people. Get it to the, sends it right to Mejia. It looked like it was deflected afterwards. Now the match being announced, and it's gonna be Carlos Mejia. You had many options, but these players, the lore that made the difference. Here with a hat trick, Palacios with a hat trick. And those bit Pires also needs to go and get some honorable mention because he was the player that really opened the play for Honduras as they just go right down. Offside is Cabrera. Not right there, and Chivarria's not gonna get beat on that. Final 20 seconds. Cuba looking for one more. Honduras don't want another one to get scored. They want to keep their goal advantage as much as possible. The goal differential is like gold because that type of difference puts you into a World Cup. And Jose Kelly saying, that's it. That's all. There is no more. Honduras with a 7-1 victory over Cuba. Two hat tricks. Mejia and Palacios with Ben Perez getting one as well. Also for Cuba. Brian Savini as the Honduran players overjoyed. They're a step and a half away from going to India. Of course, it all depends on the match coming up against the United States. Your final score, Honduras 7, Cuba 1.